Did you hear Donald Trump's comments on a quote, bloodbath if he's not reelected? Americans aren't stupid. He was talking about a bloodbath. They empty out the rhetoric to tell themselves that he's just speaking in hyperbole. But what we know is that this is a man who has already fomented insurrection, and he is boldly fomenting insurrection again. He's probably banking on that, um, uh, we're stupid. What I heard was a continuation of the same rhetoric, the same endorsement of political violence that we've seen from Donald Trump for years, as you pointed out. He's even predicting a bloodbath. What does that mean? He's going to exact a bloodbath? When you watch the headlines talking about Donald Trump, they were mischaracterizing his comments. Yes, he said what he said, but it was taken completely out of context because he was talking about the auto industry and business with China. What does that have to do with y'all not telling the truth? By trying to fabricate or embellish stories in such a fashion where you could easily get caught, exposed for, for your miscalculations or your flat out lies and something that he is going to use to his advantage to get reelected. I'm wrong. What is good, YouTube family? It's your boy, Shy. We back again with the Black Anomaly Rising Channel. So I got to talk to y'all about this bloodbath comment that Donald Trump made. Okay, so I'm going to play the clip full context so y'all can hear it. And I haven't had time to talk about this. This actually occurred maybe a week ago. It was a while ago. And I didn't have time to get into it. But this is something that the liberal media has been going crazy with, which I knew they would. I actually saw this rally while it happened and i knew i was like oh he said one word they're gonna take it out of context and that's absolutely what they did on top of that they went in on stephen a smith trying to say he's basically defending trump anybody who tries to clear anything up that trump said they try to call you a cult member they try to smear you like you're a trump fanboy fangirl whatever just because you don't let them lie to you but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and play the full clip so y'all can see what he was talking about. Let's get into it. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're gonna get that, you're gonna not hire Americans, and you're gonna sell the cars to us now, we're gonna put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those guys. If I get elected, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. So clearly, for those who don't have Trump derangement syndrome, you can tell that Trump is talking about the auto industry and American workers and how basically the United States under the Biden administration is going to be losing jobs to china whereas under the trump administration we won't the bloodbath is in regard to job loss okay it's, it's in regard to economically prosperity of america it has nothing to do with a literal war which is what these idiots in the liberal media were trying to say as you saw by the intro now stephen a smith goes into this deeper so we're going to react to him because he's been criticized and I looked at his comment section. They're basically roasting him in the comment section for, I mean, he can't get, like, he can't catch a break because he's getting roasted for clearing up Trump's comments, which he obviously wasn't talking about a literal bloodbath. But at the same time, uh, he still says that he supports Joe Biden. So he's getting attacked on that front for basically acknowledging that Trump is being mischaracterized. But he's going to vote for Joe Biden anyway because, I don't know, he's afraid of Trump's rhetoric still, even though his rhetoric is being mischaracterized. It's really dumb, which, honestly, I mean, when it comes to politics, that's my take on Stephen A's take on politics. Really dumb. But without further ado, let's get into it. I released an article about me, and it was entitled, quote, Stephen A accuses the media of being unfair to Donald Trump. Here is what I said. Based purely on this video, if it is accurate, then it would be true. It seems real Donald Trump's words were taken out of context. Reading the headlines, I've read, fair is fair. 
Now, let's stop there. Full stop. Just because you clear up words that are clearly taken out of context, this therefore means, oh, you're supporting Trump. You're not allowing us to unfairly mischaracterize his words and smear him to make sure that he loses. That's what they're telling Stephen A. Smith. You are not loyal because you're not letting our lies win. That's what they want to do. <laughs> like, think about how silly this is. Imagine a family member, like, trying to, like, let's say a family member freaking murder somebody. And then they, they come at you for not lying to protect them. Like, wait a minute. I'm your family. It doesn't matter if I did something wrong. You're supposed to lie to protect me. You're supposed to be on my side no matter what. Even if I'm lying, even if I'm about to get you in trouble, make you look stupid and destroy your reputation, you're supposed to do it anyway because you're loyal to me. And they call the right... The Republicans, the conservatives, the cultists. I posted this in response to the owner of Tesla and X, the one and only Elon Musk himself, saying, quote, legacy media lies, end quote, in a post highlighting media criticism of Trump's speech. That was in reference to Trump's comment Saturday at an audio or an auto industry rally in Dayton, Ohio, y'all. An auto industry rally in Dayton, Ohio. On top of that, it was an auto industry rally. So not only was he referring specifically to the auto industry, he was at an auto industry rally dedicated to the auto industry. You guys see the problem here? <laughs> like, are the gears turning yet? Because I know, I know some haters watch that. I know a lot of people, a lot of y'all already know it. But a lot of haters hate watch these videos and then they try to come at me in the comments like some dum dums. What do you got to say now? One thing Trump did say was this. Listen for yourself. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think they think that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. What did I do? The fact of the matter is, when you watch the headlines talking about Donald Trump, they were mischaracterizing his comments. <laughs> yes, he said what he said. It, it don't matter, Steve. It doesn't matter. They don't care if they do anything wrong. As long as it makes Trump look bad, it's all fair game to these people. They feel like they have the moral high ground so they can lie. They can take him off the ballot. They can disenfranchise voters. They can indict him falsely. They can do whatever because to them, he's the bad guy and his supporters are the bad men and women. They don't care if they have to lie and cheat and steal and whatever they have to do to win. It doesn't matter. This is what a true authoritarian situation, a true authoritarian government looks like. And these people are too indoctrinated to really understand that. It was taken completely out of context because he was talking about the auto industry and business with China and how if he's not elected, it's going to be problematic in terms of doing business with China as it pertains to the auto industry. I don't take it back. I ain't backing up one inch. What the hell is going on here? Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> I'm really getting sick and tired of people mischaracterizing my quotes. But any given time that I want to, when you mischaracterize what I say, I'm going to come back at your ass. I didn't vote for Trump in 2016. I didn't vote for Trump in 2020, and I damn sure ain't going to vote for him in 2024. I voted for Michael Dukakis versus H.W. Bush. I voted for Bill Clinton, not once but twice. I voted for Al Gore.
I voted for John Kerry. Yes, I did. And you damn right I voted for Barack Obama, not once, but twice. And I voted for Hillary Clinton. And I voted for Joe Biden, despite the crime bill. <laughs> so now you see what I'm saying about Stephen A. So Stephen A is basically, he's between a rock and a hard place because he knows his base, right, is, is essentially far leftist progressive wackos, really. Like that's a big chunk of his base. But he's also saying, well, hey, you're still not characterizing what Trump said properly. Like you're letting the Trump derangement take over. But Stephen A has repeatedly has Trump derangement. I've literally had the videos on this channel already with him expressing clear Trump derangement. Now he's trying to like, you know, he's trying to play the fence, I guess. You know, or, or maybe he's trying to be fair. But the thing that's stupid about this is he's he's saying like, well, this is basically some BS. Y'all are lying. Y'all are mischaracterizing. But, oh, I'm going to support y'all anyway. I've been supporting y'all, and I'm still going to do it. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying. Leading to mass incarceration for minorities in this country, although it was entirely his fault because you had the Congressional Black Caucus pushing him to do it. But he bragged about how it was his bill, his bill, his bill, until it wasn't politically expedient for him to do so. And guess who? And guess what? You still voted for him. So congratulations, you played yourself. Please smack yourself. There's plenty of Republicans other than Trump that I would have voted for, and I wouldn't have apologized for it. Don't bullshit me. Because I don't happen <laughs> to disagree with every that's, that's That's bull crap because there's been plenty of conservatives that, I mean, sure, I didn't like, I, what, Mitt Romney, right? But there's no way, like, okay, if Stephen A. Smith has voted for every single Democrat candidate, which I really believe that if the right uh, Republican pops up that he's going to vote for him. I mean, I think this is the guy who tried to act like he would have maybe supported Nikki Haley. I'm like, Nikki Haley has all the makings, like everything about her background and her legacy is all that of a rhino, okay? All that of a neocon like she is not who you want like <laughs> nikki haley isn't even a republican she got mainly a lot of at least a lot of democrat votes who they just want joe biden to win anyway they was just trying to sabotage trump so <laughs> like there's no republican that you would have supported stop the cap all you Democrats out there are walking around, acting like it's somebody else's fault that in the year 2024, you're begging a soon to be 82 year old incumbent to run for reelection and win for you because you haven't had a damn soul that can take them. Four indictments, 91 counts, two impeachments, civil suits against them, elevating above $400 million. And he is whipping y'all ass. <laughs> this is facts. But Stephen, this is why they are lying on him. This is why they're trying everything because they know Trump is powerful. They know that this base, like Trump is got to be, even though he's one of the most hated men ever, I feel like he's one of the most loved presidents in U.S. history. And part of the reason for the love, I think, is because of the hate, too. It's a combination of things. The American First Agenda, all of the fake indictments, the impeachments, all of this stuff is turning people towards Trump. It's, it's taking people off and making people angry. People don't like it. They don't like to feel like you're trying to remove their ability to vote for him. If they would have just left him alone, I think that Trump probably, maybe, even though Biden is terrible, the Democrats are horrible right now, I think Trump might have struggled a lot more. I still think he probably would have ended up, pretty much would end up winning anyway. But I think he might have struggled more because they won't shut up about him. They're doing the work for Trump. He doesn't have to campaign. All the lies on him that people can easily debunk, like in this video. Stephen A. Smith did it. He's doing it in his video. I'm doing it in this video. Other people have done it. It's obvious these people are liars. And when you get caught, people are going to start questioning you more and more. And as they continue to do it, which they will, I'm going to expose it every time I see it. And so will others. We're going to spread these videos out, share videos like this so people can tell 
that the Democrats are lying. When people see this, you like a lot of people are gonna resist. It's natural. This I don't want to watch that. This is just gonna be propaganda, brainwash. Oh, a black a Trump supporter. This is clear brainwashing, right? This guy's this guy's an idiot, uneducated. No matter that I got degrees and a bajillion certifications. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> but they're gonna think that they're super smart and that they're right. It's fine. Let them watch the video, and eventually, some people are gonna come around. That little by little, we gonna get them. That is a fact. He secured the GOP nomination. You got him ahead in all the polls as we speak. You've got him elevated according to the polls in a world of Hispanics and blacks more so than ever before. Not to say that those numbers are going to be exorbitant, but it'll be just enough to get him reelected. And because I'm sitting here and pointing out to you that you're getting in your own way by trying to fabricate or embellish stories in such a fashion where you could easily get caught, exposed for, for your miscalculations or your flat out lies and something that he is going to use to his advantage to get reelected. I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong because I'm calling out how you don't know how to beat them. You can't stand up to the radical left, Steve. You can't do it. That means you're a Trump supporter when you call out the left for their lies and mischaracterizations and out of context nonsense. That means you're a MAGA. That's what it means. That means you support the enemy. You're not loyal, Steve. They don't like uppity blacks. Okay, they don't like that. So you sound like Candace Owens. Okay, <laughs> you sound like Uncle Tom. That's how... They treat people like Steve, <laughs> okay? It doesn't matter if they lie. To them, it's justified. It's fine. It's okay because we don't want a dictator. We don't want to bloodbath. These people are nuts. That's the problem. I'm no political aficionado. But I've been on the record saying I'd love to go against Trump in a debate. You know how embarrassing that is that I could say that? Because he beat y'all. You can't beat them. You can't beat them. You're trying everything. You're engaging in lawfare. You keep coming up with stuff. Trying to, it's Russian collusion one minute. It's civil cases the next. We got a district attorney in the state of New York going after him for paying hush money to a former porn star. You really think that's going to stop him from getting reelected? You've got tens of millions of people who are already on the record saying they would vote for him if he were a convicted felon and putting a zebra suit in behind bars. Yeah, and guess what? I'm one of them based off of what we've seen so far. This doesn't mean that if Trump actually committed real crimes and there's no counter evidence, there's no way to, to see anything differently that I would support him. But based off what we've seen, it's all a bunch of bullshit. So of course I support him, and so should you. And the best you could do is say, Stephen A. Smith is supporting him, is coming to his defense. That's the best you can do because I'm pointing out how something's not gonna work. News flash. he is taking it to y'all in such a way that it's become a bit embarrassing. It's that simple. Not only is he taking out DeSantis and Nikki Haley and Chris Christie and Vivek Ramaswamy, he's also taking out President Biden before our very eyes. The momentum keeps dissipating. I'm not happy about that because I believe that a Trump presidency could potentially cause civil war in this country. That's my personal belief based on his behavior because I believe he will be on a vengeance tour and he won't be governing, he'll be exacting revenge instead of being presidential and being the leader of the free world for all of America. That's my belief. <laughs> isn't that what Joe Biden's doing? <laughs> like America isn't exactly doing amazingly. And all of this stuff started as soon as Trump left office. Well, a couple of years after when it came, when they d decided and figured out that he was going to be running for president again, then they went crazy. Remember, it was Ron DeSantis. Okay, for those of y'all who feel like oh they're just attacking Trump, which they are, 
originally it was Ron DeSantis because they saw him. They, they felt like they already got Trump out of the way. They're like, okay, he's he's done. Now we're going to go after the next thing, which is going to be clearly Ron DeSantis. So they went after him. But have y'all heard anything from DeSantis lately? I mean, maybe from him, but about him? No, they're not worried about DeSantis anymore. They're not attacking. They're not smearing. They're not mischaracterizing him anymore, even though he does stuff and he's on the TV as it relates to bills in Florida all the time. Ron DeSantis is still out there doing a lot of stuff, but they don't care. They care about whoever they feel like is the biggest threat. And these people have gone rogue. They are radical. This is one of the reasons that they have to lose in November. They have to be rejected by the American people. You can't embrace people that's just going to just blatantly lie over and over again because they're trying to get your vote. But that does not mean I'm not going to point out when you're doing something that's to your detriment that is not going to lead to beating him. The truth is the truth. He's smoking the dams right now. After he smoked every GOP rival they could find. He looks like he is destined for the White House. All Stephen A is sitting here saying, what you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we know what they're going to do. They're going to keep doing the same thing because they're stubborn and they're idiots. They're tyrannical. They're radical. That's why I call them the tyrannical left, the radical left, the authoritarian left, because that's literally what they are. There's so many examples in impeachment after the president is set to leave office in like two, two weeks. Like we're going to impeach him or, or like, I think it's like one week. It was something real close to that. Like a week, a week and a half or something. He's supposed to leave the, the presidency and they were trying to, they literally impeached him when he's already on his way out and impeachment is meant primarily to, to remove you from the office, not just to, to do it. <laughs> like this, these people are nuts. They wasted tons of money and taxpayer dollars on this stuff. These people are corrupt. It removed them from the ballot. And what was it? Uh, Illinois, Maine and Colorado removed them from the ballot. They're, they're threatening the Supreme Joe, Joe Biden's threatening the Supreme court. And, Acting like, oh, hey, you guys did it wrong. Like, turning people against the Supreme Court. These people are nuts. Whenever they say Trump did something wrong in the court, oh, the court's right. Absolutely. The court's right. Supreme Court does something with the highest court in the land. Oh, the Supreme Court's wrong. Yeah, we need to get rid of them. These people are nuts. And you see what happens when you have the least bit of dissent. Stephen A. is a very loyal Democrat. Very low. He said he voted Democrat every election. But that's not enough. They said, Stephen A., shut up. <laughs> Stop talking, Steve. <laughs> Who told you it was okay to say something bad about us? Crack that whip on him. Between Stephen A., Charlemagne, <laughs> it's like these people are literally getting the whip cracked on them for calling out lies, for being critical of their elected official people who they supported, who they voted for. They're like, hey, can we talk about this? They said, the hell no, you can't talk about it. Who told you to speak? Hell, yeah, I mean, and they try to say that the uh, black Republicans are some sort of house slaves, some sort of house Negroes. Look how they're acting for the Democrat Party. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I appreciate you watching the Black Anomaly Rising Channel. I'm out. Four indictments, 91 counts, two impeachments, civil suits against them, elevating above $400 million. And he is whipping y'all ass.